The Volvo XC90 is uh, Volvo's largest passenger car and uh, it also happens to be the largest uh, mid-size SUV in uh, Volvo's lineup. However, the first generation of the XC90 was not very appealing to the eye. In fact, it was a vehicle that uh, maybe would have been driven around by an old man. They were reliable, they, but they were not very appealing. They were still very safe and they were based on Volvo's P2 platform. However, with the second generation of the XC90 came the most dramatic of changes in the, in the conservative SUV that now had transformed into another uh, mid-size SUV that could appeal even to the younger generations. Uh, today on Conversations Kanisa, we are bringing you an up-close and candid review of the 2016 Volvo XC90 because Conversations is that channel that will guarantee you an alluring motor vehicle experience and I'll be your host, Eric Okabi, Eric with the CK. Do follow me at a personal level on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, you guys have really asked for the XC90 and we have got it courtesy of uh, Caplicity. And uh, tell us, which other cars do you want to see on Conversations Kanisa? Uh, follow us on our social media platforms, Conversations on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And now, let's get up close and candid with the XC90 because it has some... Uh, interesting history that comes with the XC90 name. Before we can talk about the XC90, uh, please do remember to subscribe to the channel and also like this video so that it's recommended to your friends. The birth of the XC90 was in the year 2002. It was a bulky mid-sized SUV that was not very appealing to the eye. In fact, it was a car that could be referred to as the SUV that is uh, safe but for the old people. It was not very appealing to the younger generations. However, it carried uh, reliable engines and also incredible safety ratings. Uh, during that time, uh, Volvo was owned partly by Ford and uh, after Ford owning Volvo, it transitioned into being owned by Geely. Now, when the, the Geely ownership started, Ford and Volvo had also had already started building an XC90 based on Ford's EUCD platform. Whenever you talk about Volvos, especially the 2010 all the way to around 2012, we talk a lot about the EUCD platform by Ford. But uh, after Volvo went into Geely, they decided let's just shelve this project and let's start working on a new platform from scratch. Now, the new platform uh, that uh, the Volvo XC90 is built on is called Volvo's SPA platform. SPA stands for Scalable Product Architecture. So why did they choose to do a totally different platform? Well, Volvos have had a problem, you know, when it comes to sourcing for parts, especially the XC90s, the earlier, the earlier generations. They were mostly, you'd, you'd find parts that are, you know, specifically designed for XC90s. But now Volvo wanted to try and make the cost of ownership a little bit cheaper. Uh, the other thing, they wanted to provide room for hybridization. The other thing is that they wanted to make this bulky SUV a bit lighter. And now hence came Volvo's uh, scalable product architecture that would try and, you know, bring out something we call design commonality, meaning this XC90 will share parts with other Volvos in the Volvo lineup. So that is why the SPA platform came with the new second generation Volvo XC90. So the production of the second generation of the XC90 started in 2015 and this is the result of the new SPA platform. It is more trendy, it is no longer that boring, bulky, uh, mid-size SUV that we used to know and it's powerful, it's economical, it's aggressive, it's sporty and just like Volvo's legacy, it is very safe. And let's start talking about the XC90 with the Prima Feishi. One 
the most eye-catching thing about the XC90 are the, you know, Thor's Hammer designed headlights. They are very stylish, especially if you see them uh, with the DRLs on or even the indicator on. It just looks amazing with a very well-styled grille and also uh, a very well-styled bumper. The other thing I would like you to note is, uh, you see it has these fog lights over here. Yes. Uh, you remember the Peugeot V-Dub technology whereby if you steer to the to the right at night or to the left or if you have your parking lights on, this fog light is going to illuminate the direction in which you're headed to, the fog light actually. But on top of that, even these headlights that uh, have uh, a full LED beam are also adaptive, meaning when you're driving at night, they can adapt to road curvature. That's very interesting Volvo technology, although these days it's more or less standard in, uh, in uh, semi-luxury and uh, luxury vehicles. If you're buying the Volvo XC90, the second generation, you might find two major, okay, the top trim levels are actually two of them. You have the R design, which is this one that comes with the white on black color coding, and it has a very sporty grille. And there is also the Volvo XC90, uh, inscription. There are some design cues that are different on the inscription and that are not here but it's 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 quite you know not unless you're very keen you might not notice what are these design cues. Now the R design comes with a black grille, the inscription comes with a silver grille. The other notable difference are the rims. The inscription comes with silver, uh, not very sporty rims, but the R design comes with R design rims that have low, 22 inch low profile tires. The other thing is, wh wherever we have white on black color coding on the inscription, they are more of silver. So the R design is the more aggressive, uh, sporty uh, XC90. The inscription is more luxury and elegance oriented. So with, uh, with noting those few different design cues, let's check out what powers up the XC90 because we have a very, very, very interesting power plant under the hood of this vehicle. Uh, what is Volvo known for? And I would like us to start with nomenclature. When we did the review of the XC60, we had terms like T4, T5, and T6. Now, on Volvo's nomenclature, T4 mostly stood for T3, T4. Actually, T3 would mean the engine is a three-cylinder engine, T4, four-cylinder engine, T5, five-cylinder engine, and T6, six-cylinder engine. However, on the XC90, the nomenclature is a bit different. Okay, all Volvo XC90s of this generation only come, the petrol ones and diesel ones only come with a two liter four cylinder engine. However, you might look at the back of the XC90 and see T5 or T6. The nomenclature is very different. Now on the XC60, it might mean five cylinders or six cylinders, but on the XC90, particularly this generation, it does not mean that. What does it mean? Now, the T5, uh, because on these we have T5 and T6 and T8 as well. So what does the T5 mean? The T5 means it has a two liter engine with a turbo charger. Okay, what does the T6 mean? The T6 means it has a two liter engine, four cylinder, but, twin charged, what Volvo call e-drive. It has a supercharger and a turbo charger. Now, what about the T8? I've talked about these, the T6 being twin charged, but what about the T8? Now, the T8 has what is called a twin engine system. What does a twin engine system mean? It has a petrol turbocharged engine at the front and an electric motor at the back. Now, the T8 is exclusively plug-in electric hybrid. So it's a PHEV, it's, it's a hybrid that you can charge, whereby you can charge the batteries. So the, the T8 produces insane power figures like, you know, actually it's capped at 400 horsepower because it, it works with an engine, a powerful engine and a powerful electric motor. However, this one is the T6. The T6 still utilizes the four cylinder, two liter engine that is turbocharged, but has also 
a supercharger. So why is it twin charge? This is to eliminate turbo lag and also give you some more power. So this particular one will give you 320 horsepower and a whooping 400 newton meters of torque. Now, how is all that power transmitted to the wheels? The Volvo on the XC90 second generation featured what they call the Geartronic transmission. Now, Geartronic is basically a, a gearbox that is designed for Volvo, an 8-speed automatic gearbox that is designed for Volvo by Icin. Now, we all know Icin is a subsidiary of Toyota and the other, the previous generation of Icin gearboxes that were used on Volvo had some jacking effect and uh, some rollback effect, but the Geartronic, the 8-speed automatic is quite smooth compared to those of the previous generation. Now, with the diesel and even in some petrols, you will also get mild hybrid application. So what did we say about mild hybrid? Mild hybrid is basically uh, it, the electric motor cannot work independently. So on this, you have uh, non-hybrid, you have mild hybrid and you have plug-in electric hybrid. So, so, and that is all courtesy of Volvo's SPA platform, the scalable product architecture. So, so, and you have to note that this is not VEA, this is SPA. VEA is for, you know, smaller Volvos. Now, let's talk about the side profile and the suspension because that is also another area that is quite interesting as well. The XC90R design sits on 22-inch wheels and it comes with the R design rims and low-profile tires. Now, one thing about the R design is, or what I love about the R design is the rim, the rim itself. It's very, it's very conspicuous and it does not look as boring as that of the inscription. In fact, I think the, the inscription has a rim that is not very pleasant. So if I was to choose between the inscription and the R design, I would definitely go for the R design in terms of tires and also the black on white uh, color coding. The interesting thing, about this car is in the suspension. On the front, it has normal double wishbone suspension, conventional double wishbone suspension. The most interesting bit about the Volvo XC90 suspension is on the rear. Why? Because this vehicle does not feature coil springs. But if it does not feature coil springs, what does it use? The answer for many would be, uh, air suspension. Well, there are some XC90s that come with uh, electronically controlled air suspension. However, what about the ones that don't? Still, they do not have coil springs. What do they use? They use what is called the Corvette leaf spring. Now, the Corvette leaf spring was pioneered by General Motors on the Corvette. In fact, it's, it's named after the famous Corvette. However, it's a technology that has been there for a very long time and it's amazing to see it carried forward to the second generation of the XC90. So how does it work? The Corvette leaf spring, most of people might think that they are not, the normal leaf springs come as a pickup, but that's not the case. So it's one leaf spring that is mounted transversely across the wheels. Uh, and how does it function and what is it made of? Now, this leaf spring is made of... Uh, fiber enforced plastic yeah so it it can flex and it it works the same way as a spring and uh, it still functions as an anti roll bar on this vehicle uh, on top of that there is independent suspension so it instead of having coil springs on independent suspension what you have is the covert leaf spring and independent suspension and that makes the volvo XC90 handle very well, although the suspension on this vehicle is a bit harsh, but you're going to talk about that when we take this car for a drive with the boys. But before then, let's uh, check out how practical the XC90 is. The XC90 is quite a versatile vehicle because it can seat seven and uh, Let's see how practical it is because whenever we talk about SUVs that have a third row of seats, things do sometimes change. You get uh, less luggage space and, but, and also the third row of seats is not necessarily the most comfortable. However, on the XC90 with the, uh, with the third row of seats up, uh, you do not have 
very good boot space. Uh, no, not, not much of luggage space, but when you fold these seats, the XC90 becomes the huge practical SUV that we have always known. So if you are howling around, say, seven people, you can just uh, pull up the third row of seats and they'll, it will comfortably seat seven. But if you howling around five passengers and a lot of luggage, you can get epic or great boot space because, because these are a lot of, it's, it's a lot of space for cargo. So that is how versatile the XC90 is. And that is courtesy of its long wheelbase and wide body. It might be bulky when you're driving, but uh, in contrast to that, what do you get? You get very good luggage space and an extra row of seats. However, there is a, a trend, a global trend whereby uh, mid-size SUVs are coming in as seven-seaters. Uh, guys, are, they, they are trying to blend in uh, an SUV, a crossover SUV, and a multi-purpose vehicle. Uh, anyway, it's intelligent. It's a very intelligent way of blending together an all-round vehicle. Now, let's take a look at the interior of the Volvo XC90 and get to see how what makes it stand out from the crowd. Inside the XC90 R design, just like a typical Volvo, they keep it simple. But on this new breed of Volvos, they got some very, very nice infotainment system. Quite advanced though, uh, comes with the normal features like Bluetooth connectivity, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Also, you can monitor driver performance, your car status, it has navigation. Although, now this one that is imported, the navigation is not very, 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 uh, doesn't come in very handy. Now, if you're buying the Volvo XC90 inscription, because this is the R design, the R design comes with a black interior and has uh, R design engravings on the seats, the steering wheel, and also the, 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 the line board. Now, with the inscription, you get a beige interior and uh, also a Boas and Walkin sound system. However, that doesn't mean that the sound system on this one is not good. It's it's very, very, very nice. Uh, it, it, there's that luxury feel. Also, with this new breed of XC90s, you get a very unconventional uh, engine start-stop button. Uh, quite interesting as well. Oh, so you just flip it. Just flip it and the engine starts. The other interesting thing about this is that it comes with a 360 surround camera, very good for maneuvering. It also has a front camera, very good for, you know, viewing what, what is ahead of you. Now, uh, there are a few things I want us to head to and those are the driving modes. This car has eco driving mode. Now, eco driving mode is when you want to save fuel. On eco driving mode, you have idling stop, and all those other fuel saving features now you also have comfort and it tells you now eco is for efficient drivers it says you have comfort and comfort is for everyday use probably for highway and that uh, but eco drive will most mostly coming handy during uh you know town errands then you have off-road mode now off-road mode is ideal for rough conditions and then you have dynamic which is the the performance driving mode uh, this is the mode you want to be in when you want to have fun with the car their driving mode is individual whereby you can set the driving mode that you want to be in the other thing what is volvo really known for volvo is known for safety uh, let's talk about the safety features on this car because these are five star rated of Volvo. Number one, you have what is called Volvo's IntelliSafe. Now, the IntelliSafe is probably is in a nutshell a collision avoidance system. So it's going to warn you, it 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 is going to warn you and even uh, break whenever it detects that you're going to ram into another vehicle. That's very good uh, technology. Even in even for pedestrians, if somebody crosses the road, it's going to warn you. You're going to see a red light on the windshield. And if you do not apply the brakes, it's going to apply the brakes for you. Now, let's also talk about Volvo's uh, Side Impact Protection System or SIPS. So that is the structural system and even that even carries for the side airbags, cut in airbags. And that is for protecting you from side impacts. Now, in addition to that, they have what is called Volvo's off uh, runoff 
runoff road package. Now, what does the runoff road package? If you're driving the XC90 uh, and you happen to veer off the road and the vehicle detects that you have veered off the road, so it tightens the seat belts to hold you in position so that the, the final impact will, will keep you safe from spinal injury. So it's a car that is all round and it has kept the legacy of Volvo in terms of safety. Now, well, let's talk about the ergonomics. You get a dual sunroof and some very nice ambient lighting uh, that is not, you know, it's not very harsh. It's very comforting uh, to the eyes. You also get some paddle shifters and these come in very, very, very handy, especially when you're in dynamic mode, when you want to shift the gears by yourself. Now, how child friendly is this car? You get, you can activate or deactivate the child lock uh, electronically you do not have to go flip switches at the doors and that is technology that is very convenient especially for parents you also get a child seat mbugo will show you that when he's seated in the rear and how you do not have to carry a child seat with you the volvo xc90 comes with an inbuilt child seat that you can you know that you can pull up uh, from the second row of seats now we are going to take this car for a drive with the boys and we are going to have a conversation on also uh which one okay we'll discuss about the features on this one and where we think it wins and where it loses we're also going to do an acceleration test and we see how fast the volvo xc90 can take off uh, to 100 kilometers per hour Guys, yes, another Volvo, the biggest in the lineup. Kabisa, the XC90, mm -hmm. second generation. Very nice car. Not bad, you know the the, the older XC90s. They were vehicles for old people. Yes. Zilikuwa uh, too. They were not very interesting. Very interesting cars, but, but they had very interesting engines. The 3.2s. That is what I wanted to say. I think they were not very good looking but I think they are still among the step of Volvos that ever existed. I don't like these ones, the two liter ones. <laughs> I have my own reservations. For the two, two liter? Yes. Actually, and they are genuine reservations because we are looking at twin charging. Yes. On a two liter, four cylinder. There is something that must give away at some point. Something might, something must give in. Yes, but uh, from 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 the onset, Wanaokabi, I think for me, uh, one thing I love about this car sitting in one eh, is the simplicity. Uh, you and me are suckers for simplicity. Akuna vitu mingi. There is not much. Sijuma batoni elofkumi apa. Understand? Very easy, very simple. They store something from a series here. If you remember the GLE, this car thing here with the play. You know, next, rather than having the touch it here, yes. you can just do it here physically. Physical buttons. Mm -hmm. Have I told you my glove compartment is electronic? You just switch a button, it opens. I know those things are useless to you. To me, they are very useless. Uh, but I'm just telling you so that the guys watching can know. At least it does not have heated seats. <laughs> yes, this one does not have heated seats. But it has memory seats. Memory seats are not bad. They are yes. not useless. Yes. But heated seats are useless. Mm. We must all agree to that. Unless you live in Dondori. Uh, Olimuru. Uko place cash crop. Yao ni mawaru. And you only use it in the morning. From there, I think it's pretty uh, useless. Uh, now, let's see. Mbugwa, how comfortable is this vehicle? My friends, <laughs> I, I, I believe this is one of the most... Uh, in the Volvo lineup, I believe it's one of the most comfortable sitting here behind. One, the legroom is really, at, a, at a, uh, the fact that you have a third row seat, at a Kim Songhea, you still have sufficient legroom to play with here. The headroom, quite nice. I love the panoramic roofing, the fact that you may pick the upper for the, for the second row. Although for the third row, Akuna, they don't get the panoramic sunroof. But they have the sun visors for them, as we don't have the sun, the, not the sun the, visor, the blinders. The blinders, they mean. Something special about the, the second row seat is, Wokabi mentioned that there's a child seat, a provision one. So basically, you just pull the, there's a clip under here, you just pull it, you pull it, 
and then plug it to on top of the on each other so kanakua kadogo basically you also have the if you see here there's also instructions how to use it and also has a warning if you don't put it well high chances during a stop or a crash there'll be your child might you know and then you can plug it back for an adult to sit down otherwise apanyuma plastic <laughs> why, why do you need fancy people at the back? No, you, you need some fancy stuff. Oh, another thing uh, I haven't mentioned is the AC control system. Yes. Which is touch. Let me, you can you can control the speed of the fan by a touch of a button. Let, let me ask you. Let like me ask you. Ah, let me ask you. Yes. Does 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 the the fact that you're controlling it through a touch screen make the ear colder? The no, air it, colder. it makes it cool. cool. It makes it makes it nice. I mean, okay. There's just this thing about technology when things are softer and nice. It's very fantastic. Yeah. One thing we can agree with whether we are on the second generation or the third generation. Third generation of the X90. This second, actually second. Oh, they started with the P2. So yes. this is the second generation. Yes. We still have plastic. Hapa. Mingi sana. I remember we told guys who own Volvos that this thing is soft plastic. They were like, no, it's leather. No, it it's is not plastic. leather. It is plastic. Yes, it is plastic. Mm, I can confirm it is plastic. Plastic. Yeah. Only that it's nice, you know, soft kind of plastic, which will not look. See, come on, plastic. Yeah, ask you, please. This one is some special type of plastic. Yeah. What else Wokabi have we forgotten in this car? The 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 clean zone technology. Yes. It makes the the air. Well, if you if you're using AC, the air cleaner because they they have charcoal filters. Yes. Mm. In a clean air, basically in a kuja air fresh. Wokabi, why don't you love these things? Ah, they, they are quite useless. Uh, no, 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 no. Clean air is not useless. In fact, what you should have told them is in case somebody decide that they want to, you know. <laughs> destroy the air. You know, now that is where clean zone comes in. Eh? Why, why don't you just trim check your back? No, 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 no. Pull no, no, down no. your windows. <laughs> do we do? Do we see how much this thing pulls? Yes, let's see how fast it is. Mm. Uh, but I, I reckon the BMW X5 is faster. Let us talk about it after we have pulled, my so friend. So, let me put it to sport mode. Yes. Uh, dynamic, mm -hmm. high performance. Okay, you remember the BMW was a real... Yes. Have you had the exhaust has changed? Yes. Hey, have you told that it has all-wheel drive? Yes, it has all-wheel drive. I am ready, drive. my brother. Take it. Three, two, one, go. Hey! <laughs> wow. <laughs> like some... This is Volvo! Volvo! Hey, I had it. Yeah, there, my brother. Uh -huh. Ask me the question. How many? Ask me the question. How many seconds? You are talking about uh, Bangladesh BMW. Yeah. Seven point four seconds. Ah, you pick up Bima. <laughs> Seven point four ah. seconds, Wakanda. I told you. Remember the Bima we had? Yes. Was two wheel drive. I want you to remember that. But it, it was, was two wheel drive, six. but it was an inline six. It, it was an inline drive. six, but it has a more reliable, bigger engine. I reckon if that Bima was all will drive it would smoke this one in the morning 7.4 but for now let's not have those dynamics of all wheel let's just agree that the xc90 has uh, taken the bmw x5 bah! how how fast did the bmw x5 eight, eight seconds 8.2 seconds okay it has beaten it almost with a solid second that is fast yes but yes. it would be argued yeah. that the x5 is faster uh, uh, dynamics dynamics okay. remember even now, this gradient is a bit towards the low end. Okay. We don't defend cars when you do zero to add. Exactly. <laughs> it you is whether you, I remember <laughs> when your BMW smoked the S400. Uh, you you are very happy. <laughs> no, I tried. Oh, wow. uh, just he tried, wow. <laughs> so today, the Bima has slept. This one has taken the day, and that is it. But, but we can talk about. Uh, <laughs> no, we can't. This one is twin charged. Yeah, so I, it's very unfair. No, no you we remember, did, we you did remember not, the Bima had twin scroll. Right? Yes, <laughs> the yeah. Bima had twin scroll. Turbo. Twin scroll turbo, but this one has a supercharger. And, and, uh, so twin scroll now, doesn't make now, much now, difference. Now that is why this one is good. Because now what Volvo did is they found the weakness of the Bima where you still... Okay, in fact, the same reason that one has a twin scroll is the same reason this one has a supercharger. But this one has a very small engine making it very unreliable. Okay, at the end, there is a possibility that all factors put into consideration if you are trigger happy on this car 
you might end up not having reliability as one of your strength. Eh? But but I tell you, the BMW a little bit has an edge. I'll, but again, now the BMW settles it by having a lot of <laughs> finicky electronics. This one so settles it by having a very complicated rear suspension. That is true. A very expensive. <laughs> a very expensive one. <laughs> okay. So now I think they have all gone draw, but this one beats the B mind speed. You uh, uh, see, now this one oh, handles yes. like I don't like the way the steering corrects you. Uh, it's you know this one does not give you sheer driving pleasure. I agree with you on the yes. driving experience. The Bima takes it home exactly any day and time. I don't. There is no argument about it. So but which one would you buy between these and the Bima? <sighs> this one does not have exhaust bumps like the Bima. To be honest, to be honest, 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 I am scared of the Bima stopping anywhere and leaving me the ticket. That is the only problem. I love peace. However, this one might be unreliable. We've, we haven't had instances where it literally leaves you in the bush. You understand? So, there are not many. There, yeah, there are not, no. Like internationally, we've had, you know, a few cases. Few cases eh? uh -huh. But Bima, you know the Bima. The Bima, when it takes you, it takes you serious. <laughs> you cannot recover. So for me, I'll gamble with the XC, XC90. Mugo, which one would you buy? driving pleasure. Exactly. I, I, I'm a Volvo fan, but now when it comes to these small engines and the big inline six, you I mean, just choose BMW until you <laughs> sleep in the ticket. <laughs> no, in, in fact, Mugwa, yes. Ibrahim, if he buys the XC90, yeah. he has a higher chance of sleeping in the ticket compared to us Bima fellows. Can you imagine that uh, suspension? Oh, and the then, suspension, the suspension yeah, is hardy. Thing, it can survive only that it's too much complicated plus it has too many moving parts and that means it's very expensive to actually fix it in case it, it gets a beating. The other thing, yes. the other thing we must we must talk about mm. is this vehicle has quite a lot of road noise. That is that yes, is true. Compared to the Bima. Compared I to the Bima. I feel you are getting a little bit more. I don't know what's happening. I think the older volos they're like our S40 and AC, they are very yeah, solid. They, are, they were very solid. I think they have done some cheap material. That's why you know the Volvos we drive are very nice leather up and down. That's why we are having a lot of cabin noise. Planned yeah. obsolescence. I think so. They're Planned obsolescence. The they're using to build these things. To pick a team scope. You know, before yeah. then. Yes. I, I would appreciate the older Volvos back then. The older these ones they may look better, they may but but in terms of solidness. You want to tell me you can trust Gilly? No. No. If I, I would rather choose... gamble with the BMW. <laughs> okay. Because this was Gilly. This is Gilly. But this I hear Gilly. from twenty twenty three we are back to Volvo. We are, we will be back to Volvo, yes. but unfortunately I think the XC ninety will be full electric. electric. Now also, we, we might not have Polestar on uh, Volvo's life. Yeah, they broke off right now, an independent company. So I'd they love, went. I'd so love. right now, you only get inscription or you get the hard design thing, which again will not make sense if it's electric. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> so, Bugwa, Team Sco. Okabi is killing this review when it was just interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Team Sco, me, Bugwa. Bugwa. Team Sco. Team Sco. For me, this car scores a nine, a perfect nine. Yes. One, mm. uh, the space. The way it, the the way it's, the build the build the build design, I mean, it looks really nice. This is a car that when you appear somewhere, your respect will be there. As much as a BMW has the the looks too, but this one we must agree the Thor Hammer lights looks crazy. For me, it's a nine. Nine. For <laughs> me, I'm going to be very tough on this car, Kabi. Having owned a Volvo or owning a Volvo and coming into this. I think they have lowered the build quality in terms of the interior. We must agree. The soft, um, accustomed Volvo C that we're used to is not what we are sitting in. It's this one looks like Ukiendesha wana una choka, you understand? Yes, they are, they are basket like, they tuck you in nice, but they are not as softy and spongy as the normal seats. If I sit on in my Asaite, I bet I feel better than sitting in this. You agree, my brother? I agree. So, in terms of build quality and interior, na cheap plastic wa make up, it is not a good thing. Eh? So, there it will take off a solid point on that one. Reliability, I'm still skeptical. I'm more of 
I would rather have a Volvo with a bigger engine. Three point two liter. Going to or two point five. The real T sixes, yeah. Yeah, and two point five. Five point two. Two point three. You can see the other T eight. That means the V eight. Yes, or just five cylinders. So maybe two cylinder turn up when the car. That is the real Volvo. So there, I'm, I'm a bit skeptical. Um, what else? I think overall, as Bugwa said, Injet looks very nice. Uh, one thing that Volvo wins over even your Bima is safety. I think the safety tech in this car is just top notch. Um, top notch. So for me, I think I'll give this car a solid eight point five. Okay. Yes. Uh, my my point my my team score for this car. Yes. Number one, it's very safe. It's a good car for a family person who does not want to go very fast. It's it's quite economical on fuel, but that yeah, it's quite. Well, can it goes very fast. It goes very, it fast. goes very fast, but I'm saying it's quite economical on fuel. Yes. Uh, talking about fuel, let me yeah. just put it back to Eko. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, but for me, my honest team score on this vehicle would be an eight. The reason I would give it an eight, yes, in terms, you know, there is a Kiswahili proverb that says, "Yes, um, uzuri wa mkakasi, ndani kipande chamti." Ndani kipande chamti. Mm. The vehicle does look awesome. Yes, it has good safety rating, Volvo safety rating. Uh, but it, the, for for surely, I I cannot spend six million, six point close to seven million. Yes, on a vehicle that has as much road noise as a Prado. But a Prado will also cost you almost the same. Exactly, but only that the Prado has better clearance. It's it's cheaper to maintain. It's rugged. It's rugged. But this one is more safer. Like okay, the trade off. I, I get. There is a huge trade off. I get. Plus, you. Ibrahim, there, there are some things that we must really talk about. Yes, it's a nice car yes. for a person who is in town and for a person who is not an enthusiast. You know, there are people who think cars they are enthusiasts because they want cars that go fast. No, there is so much more. When you're choosing the perfect balance, for instance, you live in Nairobi, Ibrahim. Yes. Why do you need, why do you need a very fast car when 90% of the times when you're going home, you're in traffic? You need to have a car that will give you the perfect balance. You know. Yes. So for for me, the the downsizing of engines, I would buy the one that has just a turbocharger okay. or a two liter. In fact, that is what I wanted to ask you. Do you think when Volvo are designing this, they were the idea? that they put in a small engine to favor a guy who is of both worlds. You do city, when you're not charging this car on your eco mode, you are literally, you know, using very little fuel. But when you want to go beast mode, they give you two charge points. They give you a turbo charger. So that's why it will get an eight. I have a reservation on build quality and also Reliability in long term. A long term my yes. fans. So that is an eight plus an eight point five plus a nine from Bugua. That comes to twenty five point five for our card, which is a solid, solid, solid number. A solid the card. Studio? Yes. Twenty five value for money. Twenty five value for money. Kanyaga yoki, kanyaga yoki. Ah, 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 ah. Let us talk about value for money. Now, when you buy this XC90 from Caplicity, it's going to set you back around 6.8 million Kenya shillings. And uh, that is more expensive compared to the BMW X5. Now, I, I feel that Volvo purists would go for the XC90, but the guys who love sheer driving pleasure would definitely go for the X5. The X5 is slightly cheaper compared to this, but uh, Volvo wins in, sta in, in, in several aspects. It wins in terms of safety and also in terms of, say, practicality. However, the BMW X5 that we brought to Kanisa, that is 400,000 Kenya shillings lower compared to this, will give you better driving dynamics and arguably better performance. Sawa sawa. So for me, I think if you're buying a, a vehicle that is around six million, six seven million, it's up. It's it's about pure, you know, it's a personal preferences because the other vehicle that is in this price tag is the Toyota Prado TZG. Now the Toyota Prado TZG has its own niche because it's a more hardy vehicle, a more, you know. It's a vehicle that can withstand a lot of abuse. However, the XC90 is more of luxury oriented. And that's why uh, I think it, it, it's, it has its own clientele. 
So tell us in the comments, which one would you go for? The BMW X5 or the Volvo XC90?